Hello and welcome to this Tinker Shop tutorial. Uh, my name is Martin from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library, and today I'm going to show you how to make a 3D printable mini planter in Tinkercad. And what's neat about this particular planter is it's actually meant to be wall mounted. So the back is flat, it's meant to you know be flush on your wall. And it's got a little hole here for a push pin or a small nail to actually hang it on your wall. And it should look pretty great. So let's go ahead and jump right into how to create this. All right, so what we need to do is head over to tinkercad.com. And so if you don't already have a Tinkercad account, you'll just have to sign up for one. Uh, it's completely free, just sign up with an email address. And once you get in, just click on Create New Design. And you'll notice that Tinkercad likes to generate these kind of interesting project names. So what I like to do first of all is just change this to something a little bit more descriptive. Um, that'll make it easier to find in the future. And I won't go all over the basics of like how to move around in Tinkercad. If you go to the main page under learn, there's lots of really great tutorials that'll get you um, kind of used to the basics of just moving around, moving different objects and stuff. But in a nutshell, how Tinkercad works is you have all of these basic shapes. So like a box and a cylinder and shapes can be either a solid shape or a hole. So if I make this, this cylinder that's currently a solid, if I change it to a hole, what I can do is combine this hole to this solid shape. So by overlapping them, I can then group it together and it should cut the hole out of the solid. So if I group, if I select both of these shapes, just by clicking and dragging my mouse, and then I go up to the top here and click on group, you'll notice the hole cuts out of the solid where it was overlapping and it creates this new shape. So even though there's, you know, only kind of, you know, Few basic shapes to choose from by combining them together in interesting ways you can create all kinds of new shapes all right so we'll get started by making the basic shape of our planter um, and so that's it's basically gonna be a quarter of a sphere so we'll drag this sphere onto the work plane and basically what we're going to want to do is slice our sphere in half vertically and then slice it in half horizontally so we're just left with this quarter and then we'll hollow it out. Um, so the first thing I like to do is drag a ruler onto the work plane. So if you go up here to ruler and just click and drag that down and just snap it to the corner of the work plane and you'll notice now with this ruler when whatever object I have selected it will display its dimensions so it makes sizing objects and just working with them in general a lot easier um, and by default um, the dimensions that it shows are in millimeters you can change it to inches or centimeters. I'm just gonna leave it because that's fine. I can work with millimeters. Um, so let's size this. Um, we want our planter, it is a mini planter, so we want it to be fairly small, but big enough, you know, that it can hold some soil and some roots. So let's make this 10 by 10 centimeters. So that'll be um, 100 by 100 millimeters. So for the width here, I just click inside this box and type in 100. And then we'll do the same for the depth. Just click there and type 100. And also for the height, 100 millimeters. All right, so it looks quite large, um, 
but you can always change the size of the work plane as well. Um, and this zero value here actually just represents the height of our object um, in relation to the work plane. So because it's sitting right on the surface, it's it's at zero. If we raised it up, it would that number would increase. Um, but more on that later. So the next thing we're going to want to do is slice this in half vertically. So I'm going to grab a box and I'll actually use this grab this box that's already a hole and drag it in. And we just want to resize it so that it's um, bigger than the the sphere. Make it make sure it's higher as well. It doesn't have to be quite this big, but you want to just make sure that when we combine this, that it it cuts all the way through, and then just position that so that it's about halfway through. And if I zoom in underneath you see that's kind of where the center is right there so we'll slice it right there and basically everything that is inside of this this hole this this box is just gonna disappear so we have our hole selected and then I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and click on our sphere so now we can see they're both selected and then I'll just go up to the top here and click group. Awesome. So that looks great. And now we just got to slice it in half one more time horizontally. So we'll grab another box and we'll just make sure it's bigger than our sphere. And then just cover the whole sphere and then I'm going to click on this arrow and just raise it up till it's covering about half of it. So I think that looks pretty good. You just kind of have to eyeball it. And then I'm going to hold shift because right now just the hole is selected. So I'll hold shift and then click on our half sphere. Now they're both selected and I can click on group. And there we go, we have the basic shape of our planter. All right, so now we need to hollow it out. And basically what we're gonna do is make a copy of our basic shape. And then we'll make that copy just slightly smaller align it into the middle and cut it out. So let's just move this over a little bit. And then with our planter selected, um, we are going to duplicate it. So you can use the keyboard shortcut control D or we'll go up to the left hand side here and just click on duplicate. And that creates a duplicate copy of our selected object right over top of itself. So if I just click and drag it over, we can separate them. And then we're just gonna make this slightly smaller because this is what we're gonna use to cut out the middle. So we want the walls to be pretty thin, but still thick enough that it's, it's fairly strong. Let's just make the walls two millimeters thin. So with our copy, we'll make it two millimeters smaller all the way around. So we go from um, 50 milliliters depth to 48. And then for the width, we'll change it from 100 to 98. And the height, that won't matter. Um, but we'll wanna lift it two millimeters up from the work plane. So that's where this guy comes into play. We'll put a two into there, and there we go. So it's two millimeters above the work plane. And now we have to click on this copy and click on hole to make it a hole. And then we need to align it. Now I could just drag it in 
and kind of eyeball it, but it needs to be pretty precise. So we can use the alignment tool to align it perfectly. So we select our hole and then hold shift on the keyboard and then select our solid object. Now with both of our objects selected, I'm gonna go up here and click on align. And then you see all these like square or these, sorry, these circles pop up. I'm gonna hit this one in the middle. And then on the left hand side, this one also in the middle. And now they should be perfectly aligned and they're both still selected. So now I can go up here and click group. And there we go, it's all grouped together. So our planter is almost done. We just need a way of hanging it. Okay, and if you remember the example at the beginning, we just kind of created a little hole in the back where you could hang it on like a push pin or a small nail. So let's move this over and we'll create our hole. So we'll get a cylinder and we'll size it to about maybe one centimeter, so 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And you can leave the height as it is. And then we'll make like a smaller little circle at the top. So click on it, um, press Control D or click duplicate at the top here. And then we'll make this maybe half a centimeter, so five millimeters by five millimeters. And then just place that at the top, sort of overlapping. And then select both of them. And we'll use the align tool again and just align them this way. So click the center circle and then group. All right, so now it kind of looks like a picture hanging hole. I think that will work pretty well. We just have to rotate it. So 90 degrees um, to the left. So click on it and you'll notice these little rotation arrows here. And if we drag it kind of from the inside, it'll snap, um, just drag it to 90 degrees. And then raise it up we'll just kind of position it where we want it so just kind of like that in terms of the height okay and then let's center this so select the whole thing click the align tool Click the middle circle and then group. There we go. So your planter is now complete. I think it looks really great. I think you could probably make a few of these in slightly different sizes and they look really well together on like your kitchen wall to grow herbs or you know whatever you want. Um, you could also make a few in, with using different shapes. I think a triangular one might also look really good. Um, you could make your own way of hanging it. Um, this is just one way I kind of thought of. Um, when you're done, of course, you want to click on export and make sure you save it as an STL file and that'll be ready for 3D printing. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned something, and most of all, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.